today on Destination Polaris. We say adios to the lower 48 and head to Alaska. There's no other place in the world like Alaska. We look to strike it rich. We got one piece of gold right there. And catch a glimpse of Denali. Denali is behind those clouds, right? Hold on to your hat, Lindsay, because Destination Polaris starts right now. Destination Polaris is presented by Rugged Radios, the authority in communications. Welcome to Destination Polaris. This week we are in beautiful Alaska. Yeah, Lynn, we came for one reason and one reason only, that right there, Denali. It doesn't get more remote than this. A little log cabin in the woods and a week of riding through the Alaskan wilderness. Being that this was your first time and being that we wanted to come to Denali, we picked the spot just a couple of hours north of Anchorage and said that's gonna be base camp for us and all of the riding that we'll do. Alaska's big, I mean really big. It's the largest state in the U.S. So we're gonna try to keep things local as possible. So on this trip, we're hooking up the guys from Eagle River Polaris. Eagle River is just a little bit north of Anchorage. Most of our ride takes place in and around Denali, which is just over two hours north of Anchorage. Eight Creek Cabins are our home this week. We'll cruise through gold country, head to Denali, visit the small town of Talkeetna. Plus, we're going fishing. You can't come to Alaska without wetting a line. Denali, or as most people know it, Mount McKinley, serves as the perfect backdrop for any Alaska adventure. This is the number one destination people come here for. They come from all over the world year round to get a look at the mountain. And as you see, Denali can be quite the tease. Yeah, she's the ultimate tease for sure. <laughs> right there, <laughs> right behind that cloud bank. Seeing her on a clear day is a rare sight. Your chance is less than 20%. It's luck, a total luck. We're gonna cross our fingers and hope for the best. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Jeremy Gallego is our guide this week. Jeremy and his dad, Dan, have lived in Alaska for more than 20 years. Started riding when I was about eight years old, riding with my dad, snowmobiles and ATVs. So on this trip, we got Chad from Eagle River Polaris. My dad came along for the ride, so he's been doing this for probably 25 years. Jerry and I have a, have a real close relationship. Uh, not only is he, is he my son, but uh, we're, we're friends. Our ride today begins at the Dollar Creek Trailhead, just a few miles from the Gate Creek Cabins. They go from well-traveled road to less traveled gravel roads and trails. You never know what the next corner is going to bring. Hey Goldilocks, I found your bear. How are you dead? The bear tracks go right that way. And you know what, Linz? We're going that way. <laughs> <laughs> 
there are dozens of trails that lead right up to the edge of Denali National Park. So here's the deal, as far as the machines will take us. And now we're gonna walk over that ridge and up on top of that ridge and see if we can get a little better view and cross our fingers that the clouds part like the Red Sea. And then we'll have lunch, we're all packed. That's right, we got our lunches. Have some lunch. Awesome. And uh, we'll hope that the clouds go away. Burn, baby, burn. We live in the calves. I'm so tired. Changing the name of the show to Destination Walking. <laughs> That one cloud is like right where the peak is. Beautiful walk, beautiful hike back in here. Not a lot of people, which makes it even better. Look at this, three meats, ham, turkey, salami, cheese. She goes, what do you want on your sandwich? And I said mustard. <laughs> I'll just eat a mustard sandwich, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Lens. Payback is coming. This is our new favorite lunch in a cool place. You have McKinley back here, and then you have the Alaska Range, which runs that way. You've been here how many times? Four times? This is my fourth. And this is my first time. So thanks for bringing me to see Finally Denali. Now I can say I've officially seen North America's tallest mountain. You're welcome. <laughs> Denali National Park is just over 2 million acres and is one of Alaska's most prized attractions. So number one on your list, taken care of. <laughs> yes, Denali, check. <laughs> check, check. Now we're gonna pan for gold and we're gonna fish. All right, Lynn, so that does it for today. Tomorrow, we're gonna head to the small town of Talkeetna, maybe get a better view of Denali. Awesome view so far, but we can't leave Alaska without fishing. Plenty of time for that. <laughs> All right, see you with us. That's next on Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is sponsored by Rugged Radios, the authority in communications. Super ATV, your trusted source for high quality parts and accessories. And by Aluma Trailers, the best aluminum trailers available. Welcome back to Destination Players. We're going to make the small town of Talkeetna our base camp today. That's right, we're going to head out of town, definitely find some mud with all this rain, and then head to the river to go fishing. I'm ready. Let's go. A little rain can't dampen the energy of the small town of Talkeetna. Talkeetna is a pretty cool town. It's a climbing town, another town that was kind of founded by gold miners. And um, in the summer, it gets really busy, so all the all the climbers for Mount McKinley kind of set up base camp there, and they're all flown out of there, so. We're right on the outskirts of Talkeetna. We call it ComSat Road Trailhead, communication satellite, uh, as you saw the old abandoned station there. You know, the only crummy part about Alaska so far is the cell phone service. Can't get service anywhere. I wish there was somewhere I could get cell phone service. I saw you trying to get at the reception there and it wasn't happening. I guess I don't need the cell phone, but waiters for sure. The Larson Creek Lake Trail takes us to our fishing hole and getting there won't be easy. Alaska, I mean, you're gonna be crossing streams all the time. We get a fair amount of rain and a lot of water everywhere. Going and exploring somewhere, going somewhere we haven't been before, and a group of you with capable machines that can uh, go out and really explore this kind of stuff. Fairly greasy and slick today. I'm sure you probably wondered how far we were going. 
The trail that we're on today led us right out to the Talkeetna River where it intersects with uh, the outlet coming out of Devil's Canyon there and then from the lake down Larson Creek. So we've got kind of a three rivers meeting in one area right here, hence the name the Tri-Rivers area. Here we're seeing this more of a greener type water and, this, and then again the salmon and the trout attracted to coming into any clean source. Kenai River King or a Copper River Red. A Copper River Red, we think this is far. It's another 150 plus miles that it goes up to the copper and it's going in the really, really silty water and it has to work so hard that it, its species has adapted and has so much more fat in, the, in between the meat platelets that it allows it to make that journey and therefore is sought after as being the delicacy of salmon. Since it's my first time in Alaska, I can't wait to fish. Jared, you're going down. Lindsay, why is it always a competition with you? A little friendly competition is good for you. Game on. I'm gonna catch a cow is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna yeah, catch we'll a pig see. with this thing. So it's been a while since I fished in Alaska, but never like this. Oh, fish number one, the boys and girls. Oh, oh, snapped it. Jared, you oh. talk too soon. Oh. Tell me if there's anything else I need to be doing here, Jeremy. Oh, a snag. Top secret spot. None of this river business over here. Lindsay doesn't even know we're over here right now. Oh, I'm snagged again. There's a fish down there right now. He's taking a nap. Lens. What? I caught a huge rainbow back in that spot. You did not. Yep. You want to see the picture? Yep. But then I dropped my phone in the water. Some of the best fish in the world live in this stream, and we can't catch a single one. I'm very sad. How sad? Very sad. How Hanging sad. up the pole. I came to Alaska and I didn't catch a fish. How about we head to town? Sounds good. Let's go. So we cleaned up because now we're headed into town to get a bite to eat. And then Jared, what's the plan for tomorrow? I got an idea. You're watching Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is sponsored by Kicker and SSB Works. Go wherever your music takes you. And by KMC Wheels. Precision for chaos. And by B&W Trailer Hitches, Towing Adventure. And by Polaris Visa Card, Power Your Passion. Earn Polaris cash on all of your purchases. Welcome back to Destination Polaris. Gate Creek cabins have been our base camp all week and these places are beautiful. Lakefront property, plus you walk right out the front door and get on the trail. Yeah, they got about a half a dozen or so cabins here and every day we left right from the property. We've gone to Talkeetna, we've gone to Denali, and today we're gonna go mining for some gold at Cache Creek. Awesome, let's hope we strike it rich. But before that, we gotta, right. have, we gotta have breakfast. We do, and it is steaks on the grill. They have about eight cabins now, and they have groomed trails there, a lot of cross-country skiing. There's fishing right there at the lake, and just a really cool area. The theme of today was to do a little gold mining down at Cache Creek. This morning we head out of Gate Creek. This is the gateway to gold country. One of the cool things about Alaska is, I mean, you can pretty much go just about anywhere you want. You don't have to look far to find old mining gear sprinkled around the tundra. 
long time ago, and it all ended up in this place. In this particular area, what they did is just the state just uh, collected some of this equipment and just laid it here in this area so people can see. I don't have the patience though. You know, it just takes a long time to sit there and pan for gold, and I figured I'm not gonna get rich doing that, but there's a lot of people to do. On the way to Cache Creek, we pass through the old gold mining town of Petersville. Lindsay, I hope you brought along your gold digging shoes. Oh, I wouldn't mind finding a nugget or two. That's why we're headed to Cache Creek. When you arrive, ask for Ken. We mine and I teach panning. Ken Lee has been mining for decades and is showing us his mini paradise. So Lindsay just took off her boots so she could go gold mining. And in the meantime, while she's looking for gold, I'm filling up her boots with rocks. I don't know if she'll like this or not, because these are brand new boots, but we're gonna do it anyways, just have a little fun with her. Jared, I saw you do that. No, you didn't. All right, I got my boots on. We're all set. What we do is just dig in between, dig under some rocks. This dirt right in here on the on the that's surface. That's what we want. That's what we're gonna pan. There's no wedding ring in that one, Lynn. Uh, <laughs> these are river pans. And just get a little water in there. Oh. Yep. And then we do the hoochie coochie. Oh, the hoochie coochie! <laughs> and shake it all about. You always keep the gold right in front of that ripple. Okay. okay. So you, as you shake it down towards that ripple, shake all that dirt down, and then we'll put it in the water. Just set it in there. We'll, we'll clean these. Take these big rocks out. Jared's <laughs> putting all the big rocks back in there. And you see, you just let the rocks float off. Okay. They float right off, right in this dead water. There you go. I noticed you're spending a lot of time with her and no time with me. <laughs> I can teach her, you'll never learn. <laughs> it's go real easy, and there's the goal. Right here. Oh the yeah, flakes. look at now the flakes. No. Gold flakes. Right here. Right here. Oh, right there. Dude's got just rocks. See, you got we more. Got, we got a lot of gold right here. You've been doing this how long? Since I was 10 years old. <laughs> how much gold did you find? We'll have to wait to find out. No, you. I already know. You didn't get any. I knew it. He's over here you know acting all sly. My, I knew exactly what was right going here. on. Oh, what's wrong with your boots? Oh, <laughs> uh, look, there's all the gold in your boots. <laughs> so funny, isn't he? Stick around because we've got one more ride coming up next. You're watching Destination Polaris. Destination Polaris is sponsored by Brimstone. Camp, ride, and kick back at Brimstone. And by BF Goodrich Tires, who asks you, are you driver enough? And by Walton's, everything but the meat. So my favorite part about today is huh? they say it's never windy up here. Like six days a year, it's windy. <laughs> Today is all of those six in one day. Wow, the wind up here is just whipping. <laughs> all right, now let's all get in the vehicles and go while she's chasing her hat. So it's our last day in Alaska, and we've moved south from Denali to the town of Willow. Our plan is to ride Hatcher Pass, but we've got some serious wind to deal with. Any typhoon that hits Philippines, Japan, China, 
they come here. A little bit windy, overcast. Uh, it felt like it was blowing about 600 miles an hour. 600 miles per hour, okay, maybe not quite. But I think we showed up on the wrong day. Here in Willow, it's only windy about five or six times a year. Just our luck, because today is one of those five or six days. Oh, we got all kinds of riding right here. That's why I moved up here. Steep mountains and rocky, a lot of it, and there's swamps, there's trees, there's a little bit of everything here. Today we ride with the guys from Hatcher Pass Polaris on Black's Trail. I have ridden a lot of up in Hatcher's Pass over the years. Uh, I love the different types of terrain you can get into. You can stay in the rocky areas, the or you can get into the mud if you want to do that. Um, there's quite a few river crossings once you get back in the hills a little ways. There's a lot of trails. This trail goes that we're on right here, it goes back 15 or 20 miles. We're going to rip up to the top and get our last look at Alaska. So you can all see for miles and miles once you get up on top. You can almost see Russia. <laughs> You're joking, right? Maybe not. We're gonna have lunch up here, but we're gonna go down a little bit for lunch because this just ain't cutting it. <laughs> Woo! I'll see you in Russia! <laughs> all right, let's get out of here. And you can actually ride, for the most part, all the way to Talkeetna if you had enough gas. Well, I wish someone would have told us that. We could have made that ride. Oh well, maybe next time. It's Alaska, Jared. Of course there's going to be a next time.